What's up everyone, it's Mark from Silence Tech and I hope you're all keeping well. It's been great uploading so soon after my last video and long may it continue. The only trouble is I currently have the flu, RIP. Right, today Corsair have sent out a load of mice for me to check out, so it's gonna be one extremely long review. And FYI, if you're wondering what keyboard I'm using, it's the K70 RGB Mark II with low profile switches. I know someone's gonna ask me in the comments section. I'm going to try and be as detailed as possible for each one, and there's gonna be links for the mice down in the description. But first up, Corsair's brand new mouse, the Iron Claw RGB, an extremely large ergonomic mouse weighing 105 grams, geared towards palm grip users, and it's priced at 59.99 US dollars. The Iron Claw from Corsair is possibly the biggest mouse I've ever used, coming in at 13 centimeters long and eight centimeters wide, although its base does flare outwards, so it's more like seven centimeters at its gripping point, and my hands just about grip this mouse correctly. To give you an idea, my hands are just under 19 centimeters in length and 10 centimeters wide. If your hands are any smaller than mine I'd look elsewhere for another mouse. It's also extremely tall at 4.5 centimeters. When gripping this mouse none of my fingers actually touch my mouse pad. The Iron Claw has textured rubber surfaces on the thumb rest and opposite side. Both provide excellent amounts of grip and both side buttons are very well placed. Quite often the forward button can only be activated by changing your hand position but not with the Iron Claw. The left and right clicks have hardly any travel distance to activate, although they do feel a little soft and not very well defined in my opinion. I love that the mouse has two DPI buttons well out of the way to minimize accidental presses. The scroll wheel has a rubberized surface and it feels a little loose, plus the scroll wheel steps aren't particularly well defined. shape she's got a big booty but it's interesting that the mouse seems more front heavy. The top is slanted with a steep curve and my hands rest perfectly on this mouse. It's extremely comfortable over long periods of time. The Iron Claw is one of if not the best mouse I've ever used over long gaming sessions regarding comfort and I much prefer smaller lighter mouse for performance but for games like MMOs or MOBAs this is a great choice which is what it is designed for. I would say you could also use this for an FPS gaming mouse, although maybe just some casual gameplay. There's also a nice groove over on the right side that catches my ring finger aiding lift off. The right side provides plenty of room as well to house your ring finger and pinky finger if you prefer having all of them off your mouse pad while gaming. Tracking is extremely good on the Iron Claw, installed with a new PMW3391 sensor that Corsair developed with Pixard, essentially a 3366 on steroids, and from my testing I found nothing but one-to-one -one tracking, it didn't skip, and the sensor was impossible to spin out, capable of 16,000 DPI all the way down to 100 with one step increments. Overall it delivers tracking that cannot be in any way. Rounding off the Iron Claw, I have no doubt a lot of gamers are going to love this, but it does have a particular audience, in my opinion gamers with slightly larger hands than mine, that play MOBAs, MMOs and some casual FPS gaming from time to time. That said, it also would make an excellent editing tool due to the fact it's the most comfortable mouse I've used over long periods of time. The next two mice I'm going to mainly focus on the new features Corsair have added as I've already reviewed to the previous editions before. My favourite of the bunch is the M65 RGB Elite, and you've probably heard of the M65 or the M65 Pro before, but what makes the Elite the best edition yet is its weight reduction. The previous Pro model was 115 grams once its customizable weights was removed. The Elite weighs in at 97 grams, while gaming the Elite I was surprised at what a difference that reduction made, although I would love it to be even lighter. 
If Corsair removed the aluminium underbody and swapped it for a plastic one, I can't see any reason why the M65 Pro couldn't be around 80 grams. Plus, if they made it wireless, I may even be tempted to use this mouse full time. But that's just me, I love a super light mouse, and I know a lot of you love heavy mice. And I also say I would like it to be wireless because I do find the braid on this mouse a little stiff. Other changes you will find on the Elite RGB is the redesigned thumb and sniper buttons. Corsair have finally nailed their placement, for my hand size at least. Both side buttons are easily accessed without me having to change my gripping position. Plus the sniper button is just in reach of the tip of my thumb and in my opinion these are the best placed buttons on any mouse I've ever used. Regarding the sensor, you will find the same PMW3391 Pixard sensor that I previously mentioned with the Iron Claw. Excellent tracking no matter what DPI range, although I doubt you'll ever be able to detect any difference between this sensor and the 3366. Lastly, moving on to Corsair's second ever wireless mouse named the Harpoon RGB Wireless, this mouse has great potential, not only because of the wireless technology built in, but because it's it's priced at only $49.99 US dollars. Weighing in at 99 grams, it's fairly light for a wireless mouse, and while using it, I found it very easy to lift it up and throw about. The size and ergonomic shape is easily the best out of all the others I featured in this video. With dimensions of 11.6 centimeters in length, I found the claw grip style most comfortable. The sides both have textured rubber surfaces that aid grip and doesn't seem to ever become slippy over long periods of time. The left side curves inwards, allowing my thumb to rest just under the forward and back button comfortably. The right side is the same, although there's not much room for my ring and pinky finger. The mouse ideally fits hands that are slightly smaller than mine. All of the six programmable buttons are very good on this mouse. They feel responsive and have just the right amount of travel with nice audible clicks so you know they've been activated, especially the left and right clicks. Underneath the mouse there's a compartment for storing a USB receiver plus a switch that can be toggled between the wireless receiver and Bluetooth. Clearly you're going to want to connect this mouse to the wireless receiver which delivers a 1 millisecond response time which is as fast as some wired gaming mice and I found also the battery life lasted for around 55 to 60 hours of continuous use which was excellent. Also the harpoon works really well in wired mode while the mouse is charging. Tracking on this mouse is also very good, although it doesn't use the same or as good sensor as in the other two mice. It uses the PMW3325, which is interesting since it's wireless, you would imagine that that would probably want to have the best sensor possible. But the maximum DPI of this mouse is 10,000 that can be set using Corsair's IQ software and toggled with the DPI button behind the scroll wheel. Gaming on this mouse I found pretty good. I wasn't as good in my favourite FPS shooter with this one compared to say the M65 Elite, but there's a certain freedom I get from a wireless mouse that inspires a certain confidence while playing FPS shooters. Overall it's a great little mouse that that's capable of keeping up with any wired product. Rounding off now guys, and I'm very sorry I've had to rush through this because the NDA is getting lifted, so I've had to really make sure I got this review out in time. But all of the mice I found have great potential in the right hands. During my testing I found that the Iron Claw suits a casual gamer with extremely large hands. The M65 Elite is for hardcore FPS gamers as long as the shape suits you, and lastly the Harpoon is for gamers that demand that freedom that only Wallace brings.
Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. I didn't want to be on camera today because I've got the flu and I look absolutely awful. I'll see you real soon guys. My name's Mark from Silence Tech. Goodbye.